Hello, my name is Dr. Joshua Haney and I'm a saxophonist and educator. Today I'm coming at you with a very interesting video courtesy of my friends at Syed Music as well as Con Selmer. I have the very distinct pleasure today of showing you the brand new Selmer Signature Series alto saxophone that was just announced a few weeks ago by Selmer Paris. Before I continue, I'd like to say a quick word about Syed Music. Since 1946, Syed Music Company has been offering the most respected brands and best selection for your piano, keyboard, band, orchestra, guitar, combo, and other music needs. Syed Music is proud to support the effort to keep music an integral part of our nation's elementary and secondary school curriculums as well. So they made an ideal partner for being able to access this summer signature alto saxophone. In addition to Syed Music, many thanks to Con Selmer for being able to work with me and help identify a retail partner and getting my hands on this instrument in a relatively speedy manner. Anyway, on to the review. So the Selmer Signature Alto Saxophone is a very interesting product because it fundamentally breaks from what everyone expected Selmer Paris's product strategy would look like just a few months ago. When the Selmer Supreme released just a few years ago, pretty much everybody expected that the company was transitioning to two primary models, the lower cost Selmer Axos and then the higher cost Selmer Supreme, which would cover just about everybody's needs. However, there were some folks that, while impressed with all of the Supreme's changes, improvements, uh, its ease of play, its great response, its ease of intonation and good ergonomics, um, some folks were still yearning for that more classic Selmer Paris experience where there's a little bit more resistance from behind the horn to shape the sound, a still a little bit slightly darker color and timbre, and of course the more traditional ergonomics that have been a mainstay since the Selmer Series 2. So as a result, we have this. This is the Selmer Signature, and the Selmer Signature fundamentally represents what I consider to be the next evolution of the Series 2 heritage. If you look closely at this instrument, it has all of the same ergonomic features as the Series 2, including the uh, asymmetrically shaped lower uh, spatulas, a bit of a chunkier left hand spatula design where you can see it's not quite as uh, light as the Supreme and the older Series 3s. The spacing for the left hand palm keys is more traditional as well, a little bit more spread out. The right hand palm keys completely lack the scalloping and more modern shaping that are found on the Supreme models. However, there are some features that were taken from the Supreme and put onto this, including first and foremost, the three point concentric clamp design and the rotating neck screw right here. So if I were to loosen this, I can actually reposition this neck screw anywhere I want. And also more importantly than the rotation feature, it ensures that the neck is tightened symmetrically and with even pressure around the entire circumference of the horn. In addition, the horn has some tweaks to this overall tenon area and neck design. The tenon area is a little bit smaller, a little bit more compressed compared to the Series 2, and the neck itself has features from the more modern Selmer neck designs. Selmer also says that there have been small tweaks to tone hole placement, key height, tone hole height, and um, other small acoustic improvements that are mostly aimed to improve the intonation and ease of response across the horn without fundamentally changing its character. Another new feature that this horn borrows from the Supreme is some new aesthetic design. The lacquer color is a bit darker and more golden in nature. It's slightly less bright than that of the Supreme and a little bit darker and richer in color, but by just a slight hue. It's not too far off, but it's not quite the same. Also, you'll see that they returned the Selmer logo to its classic French blue color. This is a change that's actually moved across all of the Selmer horns. They used to be a darker navy blue post Jubilee, but a lot of people preferred the brighter shade, and now all the horns have the brighter shade back from the classic days. Another beautiful aesthetic improvement is this engraving. You can see it in better detail on Selmer's site, but you have to admit, it looks really great. Not only is it on the bell, but there are also features that run along the body tube as well, such as some engraving right here. There's also some right by 
the left hand palm key holes as well. A feature that this horn does not have from the Supreme is the C sharp correction mechanism, which leads to a much more familiar for some octave key response without that feeling of there being an extra key being moved. It also simplifies the mechanism just a little bit. And for those folks that are used to correcting middle C sharp with three an octave key or putting fingers down in the right hand for the top C sharp, this will be a much more familiar experience. This round F sharp key on the Supreme is now returned to the oval shape on the signature, which I actually vastly prefer. I complained about this a little bit in my Supreme reveal. Compared to the Supreme, the signature also has a slightly larger bell, whereas the Supreme has a slightly longer bell. This results in a little bit of a different character in the lower notes, according to Selmer Paris. So Selmer's pitch for this horn is very clear. It is a successor to a long tradition of horns that starts way back with the Mark VI and ultimately coalesces in the Selmer Series 2. The Selmer Series 2 has been around for the better part of 40 years, so I can understand how that horn has its own following, and you know some people just don't want to change that drastically, but might want a fresher horn that offers some of the modern conveniences and small tweaks that the Supreme brought to the table just a few years ago. I'm particularly intrigued by this horn's promise of improved intonation, because intonation concerns were probably the foremost reason that I switched away from a series two in my own practice and ended up playing a series three. So if they can capture some of the evenness without fundamentally changing the character of a series two in this new signature model, I think that's a very interesting compromise. Not only am I going to play this horn for you, but I'm also going to compare it to a Selmer series two. I wanna thank one of my students at Oklahoma City University, Sam Pollock, who offered the use of his horn for me to make this review. I thought it'd be a lot more useful to compare this signature to a series two than to my usual series three setup since this is how Selmer's really benchmarking this new horn. This series two is a post Jubilee model. It's a really, really nice playing horn. I think it's gonna make a wonderful test bench versus the signature. For reference, both of these horns will be played with a Selmer Claude DeLong mouthpiece, a Legere three and a quarter reed, and also the same exact fingerings for each excerpt. Anyway, enough discussion, let's dive in. <laughs>
Well, those were some interesting test results, so um, let's break it down. First, I consider both horns to be excellent. Neither one should get in your way if you're doing serious professional work and just need a great tool to use as a musical partner in your performance. And this is not a case of buying a good horn versus buying a bad horn. Both of these are excellent, you can't go wrong. However, there are some improvements in the signature that I think must be addressed. I find that the old Series 2 is slightly more constrained. The sound is very slightly less open. The resistance behind the horn is about the same, with the exception, in my opinion, in the lower register. It really feels like the signature feels slightly less resistant. The signature just has a more even response across the horn as far as resistance is concerned. Both horns offer a medium to medium dark sort of tone. I find that the restraint of the Series 2 lends it a little more to the slightly darker side than even the signature. However, the signature is very close. I'm probably just blowing through it a little bit easier. So while Selmer had a big challenge on their hands to essentially match this timbral legacy, this tonal legacy, I think they really nailed it with the signature. It, it feels like a successor that has a, a slight evolution of the sound without a massive change. Intonation is where things get really interesting. Now for context with these playing examples, I wasn't doing anything with my voicing, I wasn't doing any corrective fingerings, I was blowing completely neutrally. No real player is actually going to play this way. You can correct all the intonation issues with a simple voicing or a simple fingering correction. However, I wanted to really expose each horn's vulnerabilities. The Series 2 has some very known uh, intonation quirks and challenges because it's a 40-year-old design. It's the oldest mainstream horn that you can buy right now. I would say the Yamaha 62 has seen more improvements over its lifetime in various iterations than the Selmer Series 2. And then things like the Series 3, the Custom EX, the Custom Z, they are all newer designs. So of course, the Selmer Series 2 is going to have some differences in the way it plays compared to something made more recently. So this Series 2 exhibited all the usual challenges I would expect to see. The right hand lower register tends to sag in pitch significantly. And it's not just because the low E flat covered by my body or something, um, it's because these notes are just acoustically more prone to dropping in pitch on the Series 2 design. Low D is a real culprit here, and it's not even a matter of height on the low C key, both of them are about the same. Low E and F tend to drop as well. Things get a little bit better as you get closer to F sharp, and then by the time you get to G, things are a little more true to pitch. A always drops a little bit, and then once you get to B and C and C sharp, the sagging in that lower register the dropping of pitch to become flat is really noticeable. Middle D is gonna be characteristically sharp, just like any saxophone. D sharp, also sharp. E, a little more sharp than I'd normally like to see on a modern horn. Then as you ascend up the scale, high A is incredibly sharp on a series two if you don't do anything about it. As you go beyond A into A sharp and B and C, it just drips more and more sharp. And then once you get to C sharp, high C sharp, it's the king of all sharp notes on a series two it drifts way off and goes incredibly sharp. Things improve a little bit when you get into the palm keys. Uh, palm D is not nearly as sharp as the C sharp is, but it's still higher than you would like to see. D sharp is a really big culprit for this. Then once you get to high F and F sharp, these notes actually often tend to drop a little bit compared to the D sharp and E, unless you raise them up with your voicing. You actually probably heard in my chromatic scale that the high F sharp cracked a little bit, and I didn't wanna take that out because if you don't make a correction with your voicing, that's a very common thing to happen on the Series 2. So not to trash the Series 2, I mean, it plays very well. A lot of horns would exhibit the same exact issues, um, but those are ones that a lot of players have learned to get around in the last 40 years. Now, by comparison, the signature, to me, had a lot more even intonation. The right hand sagged a lot less, and I really noticed improvements in accuracy of octaves in G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, and C sharp. Now, this horn does not have the C sharp correction mechanism. However, somehow they have worked some kind of magic to be able to raise that C sharp a little bit. It's still a bit flat. You want to correct it using a three plus octave key, and then you might want to throw on a side B flat or throw on a side C, depending on the situation. However, it's way less flat than you'll find on pretty much any Series 2 horn, or honestly, most conventional horns out there. Middle C has improved a lot 
on this horn. I find that middle C on series twos and a lot of conventional horns is just a very dead note. It can often feel more resistant than the rest of the scale and you have to push through it. Um, as a result of that, the pitch will often drop Especially if you start pushing, it'll actually drop even more than if you just back off. However, they somehow managed to bring more life to this C. It's not nearly as flat as it normally is, and um, it's a lot more true in terms of octaves. I also noticed this with A. Top A on this is much more controlled, and the low A is a lot less flat. The palm keys are also a lot more even as well. Uh, we haven't messed with the palm key heights or anything. This is how it is from the factory, and I found that not only is the intonation a lot more true, but also their response required a lot less manipulation and voicing to make the notes speak. The refinements that have occurred in the upper tenon probably makes a difference in this range of the horn. So what does this mean for your Series 2? Well, the Series 2 is still an excellent horn, like I said. The ergonomics are known, they're very comfortable to most people, and its quirks are known. People know how to fix the intonation issues and they're playing on the fly. So. Nothing about the Series 2 can't be overcome with a little bit of practice and familiarity. However, in my experience, I find that the Signature offers much the same of the experience of the Series 2 with straight upgrades to intonation. There are no downsides when moving to a Signature. The character doesn't change. The ergonomics don't change. You just get better tuning and honestly a little bit more elevated of an aesthetic package as well. Does this mean that you should sell your Series 2 and, you know, pick this up instead? Uh, probably not. Not unless you are working at the highest level of performance where those small intonation improvements mean a lot to you. By the highest level of performance, I mean someone who gets paid to do their work or is teaching in a college setting and prefers the Series 2 type of design, or if you're working on advanced graduate study like a master's or a graduate degree or some kind of doctoral program, particularly if you're playing classical. If you're playing jazz, both horns will be equally workable. Jazz obviously needs good intonation too, but intonation is used a lot more expressively in jazz. So you can have a little more variation, not just even of intonation, but also of tone color. Now some other details. I think the case that comes with this horn is very nice. It's basically the same as the Supreme. It's just black. And actually I think it's a little bit stealthier, which is kind of cool. And now Selmer's including these metal end caps with their horns. And honestly, I think that's such a nice little detail. I uh, wish I had one for my Series 3. I think it'd be a really cool thing to have in the case. And then finally, this isn't exactly a surprise, but now Selmer is including, instead of the venerable Selmer SADC star mouthpiece, they are including the new concept mouthpiece with the signature. I think this is a little bit of an odd move considering that the SADC star was really designed to be paired with those Super Action 80 and Super Action 80 Series 2 horns. Um, and the concept's more for the Series 3 and for the Supreme type horn, but um, it's a good mouthpiece, can't go wrong. So anyway, that's my review of the Selmer Signature Alto. It's a fantastic instrument for someone that's looking for something in the more traditional Selmer vein and even costs a little bit less than the Supreme. I think this is a wonderful straight upgrade to all the features that you can find in a Series 2, just with better presentation, refinements to ergonomics, and much better intonation. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the Signature Alto, I'd be happy to answer them. And of course, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment and subscribe.